There's no more Texas and Oklahoma, but four additions out West and so many teams that have a shot to win the Big 12 in 2024. This is the 2024 Locked On College Football Season Preview. Only on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to the 2024 Locked On College Football Season Preview Big 12 Edition. I'm Drake Toll of Locked On Big 12, and we'll hear from several of our local experts throughout the conference Before we discuss how many teams make the playoffs and who could surprise, we have to hear from the true contenders of the Big 12 Conference, joined by Derek Johnson of Locked On Jayhawks, Cody Stovall of Locked On Oklahoma State, Chris Level of Locked On Texas Tech. We are missing JT Wistersill of Locked On Utes tonight. He already thinks that the Utah Utes have the conference locked up, so he decided to not show up this evening. I'll represent the team that believes it's going to go undefeated this year. Derek, though, with Kansas, Cody with Oklahoma State, Chris with Texas Tech. Tonight, we talk about the champions of the conference, and Cody, we start with you. A lot of return production for Oklahoma State. They bring Ollie Gordon, who might be the best player in the conference, one of the Heisman contenders, early season, preseason Heisman contenders. What does Oklahoma State bring to the table that makes them conference champions after falling a game short last season? Well, other than the 21 returning starters and 91% of the roster, I think it's going to be the senior leadership. We have 36 seniors and we have 16 redshirt juniors. That seniority is going to allow so much continuity on the O-line and D-line that communication is going to allow players to just fly instead of talk like last year. Derek, for you, the Kansas Jayhawks, there are a lot of people in the national media who believe that Lance Leipold's team is not the Kansas of old, and that should be the case. However, if you ask guys like Brett Ciencia of Pick 6 Previews, he has Kansas at 8 in the Big 12. Still a bad taste in the mouth of a program that's been lackluster the last 15 years up until the Leipold era. What's different about this Kansas? Well, first of all, over 30 seniors as well in the program for Lawrence. And I think one of the things that's going under the radar this year as far as their championship contending ability is the schedule. I mean, last year, Kansas finished eighth in the Big 12 technically, but they played six of the top seven in the conference. Like West Virginia, for instance, finished ahead of Kansas in the standings. They only played one of the top six. So it's incongruent schedules. But guess what? This year, they only play three of the top nine in the preseason poll. Chris, for you with Texas Tech, same thing. Brett Ciencia, Heisman voter of Pick 6 Previews, has the Red Raiders at 10th in the conference. They were in my conference championship game preseason last year and didn't meet that expectation, a very high expectation that many had set for them. What went wrong last year that will change this season to make Tech a contender? It's funny, Drake, because I think the the Kansas, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, all in a way kind of have the same question, and it really comes down to the signal caller. You know, I mean, you know, Derek's probably trying to – can Jalen Daniels stay healthy? Uh, I think how far can Alan Bowman take Oklahoma State? We, we, we saw him take him to the title game, but can they can they get further? Is there a ceiling there? No, Alan Well, great player. Here in Lubbock, it's can you keep a quarterback healthy? If you do and you can, I think you'll really like the results. But Baron Morton shut down in spring practice and had to mend that shoulder. It's supposedly 100% now. If he stays healthy and is available for 12 or 13 games, I think that the people really like the results, but it hadn't been that way in a decade, and that includes a decade includes Pat Mahomes. We know that Kansas State, Utah will also be contenders at the top. People have talked about Iowa State, return production of West Virginia. Those schools are going to give you a whole lot, too. We'll get to them over the course of the show today. Uh, Utah bringing Cam Rising and Brent Keithy back to Kansas State, bringing Avery Johnson in. And maybe as I point to those two teams, talk about the head coach, guys who have solidified themselves, Chris Kleiman now over the course of the last five seasons in Manhattan, and Kyle Whittingham over the course of the last two decades in Salt Lake City. Um Crazy Uncle Kyle says stuff, though. He's always got hot takes. And this guy has come out in the last couple of weeks and said that we're going to move to two super conferences with the SEC. The big, like We're weeks away from the college football season. This guy's focused on how they're going to break away from the NCAA and create their own college football playoff. He has taken maybe the spot of our friend Mike Gundy as the, the one dude who can make headlines with the power of his words. Cody, it's hot takes time. What is your Oklahoma State hot take going into 2024? that Oklahoma State will not only end up in Arlington in the Big 12 title game, but we will, in fact, end up in the CFP, which should kind of re-revolutionize where we are in the recruiting landscape. Uh, Cody, right here, uh, front row. Um, Your quarterback is Alan Bowman. So how how does the statement you just made, alongside the statement that I just made, how do those two things merge here? 
Well, ironically enough, uh, Alan Bowman did have to get significantly better within the pocket, right? His biggest issue last season was he would bail 17 yards backwards and throw it into the stands. He will forever own the OSU record for most passing yards in the second row of the student section. But this year, he's a uh, Hey, he's there allowed... were pretty ladies all over there. The co-eds That's were right. This year, I think he's uh, afforded himself a lot of opportunity to stay within the pocket. Now, part of that is because we have 172 starts returning on our offensive line. But even outside of that, right, he doesn't have a propensity as of yet to bail in the pocket. Of course, we won't know until the the lights come on and we're playing up other opponents. But as it sits right now, he's not crawdaddy and himself back 17 yards anymore. And he's staying within the pocket to orchestrate the offense. And that's all we really need him to do. We don't need a, a game changer. I, we need a game manager. Let's just call. I'm it just. Work. I'm just glad he's not rotating with two other guys to start the season because <laughs> that that's some headway there. Same with Ollie Gordon. At, le- at least we know who the starting running back and uh, and starting quarterback there are in Stillwater, which is a big uh, step forward from last year. I love well, this he, idea that Alan Bowman in like year eight or whatever he's on at this point is going to be like different now. It's like, well, guys, this is the year. Alan Bowman is almost a man. He's almost 40. All right. <laughs> Had a coaching career at Michigan, is off his parents' insurance, yeah. has a mortgage, wife and kids, and he's starting a quarterback for Oklahoma State. Uh, we we talked. That's the, the hot take for OSU is that they win the comp for the real OSU, by the way. Chris Level of Texas Tech, what is your Red Raiders hot take for 2024? <sighs> Oh man! Well, I, it was gonna. I didn't know you're gonna pin me down on Texas Tech, but I, I mean, one hot take. I is, literally I just did it for Cody. Okay, I, I know, did not I, see him about don't, to go. I don't think that because uh, Utah and Kansas State are the two favorites. I don't think either one of them wins the league. Okay, I also think that here here would be a hot take for the league. I think you get two teams in the CFP. Yeah, I said it, uh, and, and I think it'll be difficult, but I think that's what happens as far as Texas Tech goes. I think uh, I think Taj Brooks won't lead the Big 12 in rushing. He didn't do it last year. He was close. They're trying to get, get him the record here. But I think you'll be a lot more balanced, and, and, and you, it'll be remind everybody more of, uh, of a Mike Leach and Cliff Kingsbury throw it a, a lot more than run it uh, this year. It may not necessarily be a hot take, but that's what's coming. Yeah, Taj Brooks to Ollie Gordon to R.J. Harvey to C.J. Donaldson to Jaheim White to Giddens. To, I mean, you just name a plethora of great Devin running backs. Neal. Devin Neal, Devin great Neal. running backs and quarterbacks in the Big 12 this season. Derek, your hot take for Kansas this year. Well, I'm glad you brought up Taj Brooks, and I'm, gra- yeah. I'm really glad that Chris is part of this one because, I, Drake, maybe you can explain this to me. I think Taj Brooks is an outstanding running back. Why is Taj Brooks getting on all these all-conference teams over Devin Neal? Because if you look at the total rushing yards, that's the one thing going to Taj Brooks. You have a couple hundred extra rushing yards. Look at the yards per carry. Devin Neal, one full yard better. Look at the yards per catch, over six yards per catch better. Look at the yards per play from scrimmage, almost two yards better from scrimmage. Who has more touchdowns? Devin Neal by seven. Devin Neal was being penalized because the team averaged 11 less plays per game than Texas Tech. And because of the fact that they are a very balanced offense. They throw it to a bunch of other players. They have a good backup running back to give the ball to. So here's my hot take working off of that. I think with Jeff Grimes in tow, who you're very familiar with, I think he will pound the rock with Devin Neal. I think Devin Neal is going to finish top 10 in the Heisman voting this year, which doesn't sound, I guess, that extreme. If we want to go further hot take, I'll say he gets invited to New York. Uh, but KU has never had a running back, and, and they've had like good running backs for all the faults as a program. They've had Gil Sayers, they've had John Reagans, they've had guys who've come through the program who have never gotten a top 10 Heisman finish. They've had three top 10 Heisman finishers all time. All of them are quarterbacks, all of them a long time ago. So I'll say that he finishes top 10, and, and if we want to get exciting with it, we'll say he gets an invite to New York. I will not allow the name of Taj <laughs> Brooks to be besmirched on these airwaves. I just can't do it. No, it, it, all kidding aside, it's fascinating to me that this league has totally flipped there are you're going to have I don't know six to seven maybe even eight of the top 20 running backs in the country in this league we used to focus solely on running back I mean excuse me uh, quarterback and wide out this is a running back heavy league it's ground and pound and I think that the the style of football has changed I mean Corey Kiner at Cincinnati was a thousand yard rusher uh, last year. I mean, they're, they're just so many top running backs, but it's the schemes that have changed and have dictated it uh, because of the way that uh, these teams are defended. And I think that it's cyclical, but it, it'll be fun to see who ends up on the postseason all Big 12 team. But uh, my man Taj, 
he's on the preseason All Big Twelve, and, and I think rightfully so. But I, I like your man Devin Neal too, uh, Derek. I will admit it. A lot of well, great. For me, the Devin Neal thing is is can he stay healthy? Sorry, just like Jalen Daniels, yeah. right? Jalen Daniels is might be the best. I think he is the best quarterback in the Big Twelve. But can he stay healthy? Same with Devin Neal. He very well probably should be right there. But it's another question of can he stay healthy? I think that would be the only reason that I might put Taj Brooks above a Devin Neal. Yeah, I mean there are guys who are injury prone, and and I I think that question applies for everybody though. Utah especially if they're number one of the conference, they they're returning. They're starting twenty two from two thousand twenty two. They just didn't have a football team last season. They were all hurt. So everybody's back for Utah. That was there two seasons ago when when they won the Pac twelve, and that's why a lot of people believe that they deserve the hype they get. And for Kansas State with Avery Johnson coming back, I what I still need to see is Avery Johnson start more than four games. I still need to see Avery Johnson come out and captain a football program for the entirety of the season. We saw him rush for four touchdowns in the game. We saw that his young leadership was there. Can he keep it throughout the season? That's still my big question mark before I buy in on Kansas State being in Arlington. I don't have them in Arlington. Let's talk schedule. Cody, um, how do we avoid losing at Tulsa this year? The little South Alabama thing you guys did last year? Not letting you forget that one quite yet. You've got South Dakota State, Arkansas, Tulsa very early, and then that, that Utah game is a big one. As you look down the schedule for Oklahoma State, how does this play out? Well, it's a, very fair to throw some South Alabama shade, all right? I will, I will gladly accept that we deserve that. But what I will say, you know, other than, than Ollie Gordon potentially being injured for game one, outside of that, you know, I, I do think that we're going to be able to lean on the run game. And every time teams decide that they're going to load the box to stop the run, the fact that we do have a multiple 800-yard receivers returning should work to our benefit this season. For so, Kansas. And from a scheduling perspective, Murderer's Row is really at the beginning, right? Yeah. Because after that, you take on Utah, and then you have a, a big matchup with, with Kansas State, and then you have another matchup with West Virginia. I think if Oklahoma State starts the season, right, 7-0, and 6-1-ish, and uh, I think it's going to carry over for the remainder of the year and keep us at like a one-loss ball club. Yeah, I would argue, Derek, that you're in a similar situation with those last four games post by being at home against Iowa State. Tough opponent, but a home game, quasi like Arrowhead, wherever Kansas is going to play. Uh, then BYU on the road, very winnable. Colorado at home, at Baylor. Great chance you go 4-0 in that last stretch. How do you conquer that West Virginia into, I mean, e even then, there doesn't seem to be that part of the schedule where Kansas really just faces, hey, three straight weeks in the gauntlet. Does this feel like the best place that Lance Leipold team could be schedule-wise? Yeah, for sure. No, like I brought up earlier, they played six of the top seven last year, and a couple of those, like you look at the Texas Tech game, you look at the K-State game, it was with a third-string quarterback who was a true freshman walk-on when fall camp started. Um, so you look at this year, like, yes, they have just historically not been able to beat Baylor, and the Iowa State game being at Arrowhead, probably not great because Iowa State will travel super well. We've seen how they travel for uh, Kansas City for, for the uh, Big 12 tournament. I mean, they probably have more fans there than even the KU fans. So those will be interesting. But, yeah, it really is that early stretch. I mean, I look at the at-West Virginia game. Two years ago, they won at West Virginia in overtime. Uh, and that helped get them bowl eligible. Jalen Daniels, there's a bunch of videos that uh, locally they show a lot of him yelling into the camera, new era, new era, that that was the start of the new era. And I think it's kind of fitting that that's your first Big 12 game. It's your first Big 12 road game to kind of come full circle here and try to do that again and springboard it into a strong season. And then the at Kansas State one is kind of the elephant in the room because you lost 15 straight to them. Yeah, Chris, before we talk about the schedule for Texas Tech, I think Utah got it more favorable than anybody else, avoiding a lot of major games that Oklahoma State is going to be the rubber meets the road. Past that, I think they're in a spot until they go on the road at UCF to be okay because they, they don't lose. They don't lose at home in Rice-Eccles Stadium. They've only done it a couple of times in the last five seasons. Then for Kansas State, and as we'll get into the West Virginias and TCUs, there are a lot more toss-up games than a Utah might face. Chris, for you, I want to put words in your mouth. Those first few get Abilene Christian, Washington State, North Texas, Arizona State, Cincinnati, Texas Tech's five and zero. That, that that's a five and zero stretch right there. How do you finish the season strong under Joey McGuire? Yeah, you know, you know, you 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 had mentioned earlier, Drake, that you had Texas Tech in the title game last year. Fell short. It lost six games last year. Five of those six losses against teams that had won nine or more games. Nice. This year. Your first eight of ten opponents didn't even go to a bowl game last year. Yeah. And and I think your first five of seven are at home. So you want to start talking about favorable, not easy, but favorable schedules. Uh, Joey McGuire and Texas Tech certainly have that. The first key is, is at Arizona. 
and Noah Fafita and and T Mac and and just seeing if you can you know win that one because if you can win that one and manage your your situation up to that, I mean you're you're probably going to be ranked. You're probably going to be making some noise at, at potentially six and zero. Uh, and then you've got some more home games after that. But, you know, tricky trips to Fort Worth, uh, Ames, Iowa, Stillwater. Uh, my daughter goes to Oklahoma State, too, so I, I can always still do the guns up. She calls it a pistol. I call it a gun. Um, but uh, <laughs> so that that one will be tricky the week before uh, Thanksgiving. But no, no easy road trips, per se. But, boy, do they have a good chance to get off to a hot start with so many, you know, opponents that aren't picked to do very well and so many of these games at home. Those are our Locked On Big 12 Conference contenders. Thank each of you guys for joining the show. Be sure to subscribe to Locked On Jayhawks, Locked On OK State, and Locked On Texas Tech on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. There are a few teams that have a shot to make a run from the back row. Does Baylor, 3-9 and nine Baylor, have something in the West Virginia? Deion Sanders, that's all coming up next on the 2024 Locked On College Football Season Preview Big 12 Edition. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, the best part about FanDuel is you can go right now and wager on MLB programs that are all in the Big 12 from the Arizona Diamondbacks out to the Tampa Bay Rays. Those states both encompass our conference. And I love sports. I love them so much. But right now it feels like everything's kind of we, – we've winded down. College football is coming up, but it's not here quite yet. And the MLB still is. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus Daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Head to fanduel.com and start making the most of your summer. You could probably put money on the Texas Rangers. You're likely going to lose at my Texas Rangers or the Houston Astros. You're hot. Who's going to win the AL West? All of that is on fanduel. Fanduel.com. It's fanduel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Today's show is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is a feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. It filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals and great seats. Get 50% off. This is a Labor Day offer for Diamondbacks Dodgers. They have curated deals that make it easy to find the best prices on great seats, including super deals, seat views before you buy, lowest prices guaranteed as well. This Dodgers Diamondbacks Labor Day offer 50% off tickets exclusively on game time for the Dodgers at Diamondbacks. Limited availability and supply, so get your tickets while they last for their Labor Day special. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets or MLB tickets or comedy tickets with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account. Use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. We now welcome. <clears throat> We now welcome in our Dark Horse Big 12 contenders in the 2024 Locked On College Football Season Preview Big 12 Edition. Cameron Stewart of Locked On Baylor, Paul Rockle of West Virginia, Kevin Borbra of Buff, Stephen Simcox of Horn Frogs, and all of you guys have one thing in common. You're not picked to win the Big 12 or really that close to it, but you can prove why your team is going to change that narrative here. Mountaineer Paul, we will start with you because West Virginia seems to be the best of this group as far as the preseason comes to terms. Why should West Virginia be in the conversation for one of the top two, three, five teams in the Big 12? Well, you know, earlier on the show, I heard guys talking about seniors and senior leadership, and West Virginia definitely has that going on. The best offensive line in the conference, several people ranked them that. A left tackle that's most definitely going to be picked in the first round, and several others along that offensive line, and they're very respectable. A lot of talent returning on the offensive line. A front seven that returns. The back end, obviously the big question mark for this team, but Garrett Green, Jaheim White, C.J. Donaldson are a really scary tandem, and they led the power four in, in rushing last year. I think that's a huge thing. They return all that production. The top four wide receivers from last year all return. 93% of the offensive production is back for this team. There's really only one or two questions that we have. Probably the most excited we've been in 15-plus years for a team in Morgantown, saying a lot with our history although we haven't quite been up to stuff in the Big 12, admittedly. So the back end is really our biggest question mark. We think we've got it fixed. We really do. Uh, we brought in six high-quality guys. So if that's the question, look out. I, uh, I probably should go to Simcox next with Locked On Horn Frogs because they are picked preseason higher than Colorado, but they lost them last year. Kevin Borba, you got engaged this last weekend. You have a ring, something that Deion Sanders won't win in Boulder. Um, why? <laughs> Oof, sorry. Why 
Will Colorado contend to the Big 12 this season? Yeah, I think Colorado's the biggest boomer bust team, maybe in college football. Um, they were an enigma last year, and they brought in around 45 new players this year from the transfer portal. But I, I think it comes down to a couple of guys. They have the best quarterback in the Big 12 in Shador Sanders, and they have arguably one of the best players in college football in Travis Hunter. So they added a lot more talent around them, and they addressed their offensive line issues, which I think the five of us probably could have formed a better offensive line than the group they had last year. And they added a lot more depth in the trenches on the defensive line. So they have more weapons. They have better trench play. And then you also have two of the best players in college football. And I think that makes a huge difference um, in a Big 12 conference where there's a lot of games that are coin flip games where it's 50% of the games are decided by one score. So Colorado just needs to be on the right side of a few of those. And next thing you know, you're contending in October and November. Steven Simcox, TCU, goes to the national championship, beats Michigan in the college football playoff, follows it up with five and seven in Fort Worth last year. But Brett Ciencia at Pick 6 Previews has the Frogs at number six in the Big 12, number 29 in the country. He likes the boys in purple. Why is Sonny Dyke's team going to surprise people this year? Well, a, a bigger sense of urgency this year. I think they felt like college football was canceled after beating Michigan in that playoff game. Yeah. And I sort of agreed with them, and unfortunately, is the that why turned what on. happened? That next game is what happened. They just kind of canceled the rest of the season. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I blacked out, but <laughs> I know that yes, last year they were five and seven. I'd like to apologize to everyone for the whole Colorado thing. We're the reason why they were a story for an entire month. My apologies. Uh, but this season, Sonny Dykes has admittedly said, "Hey, we're more focused this year. We've uh, spent more time like doing conditioning and off-season work, which is a cool thing. I, I think that's a big positive." Uh, returning quarterback in Josh Hoover a revamped offensive line, a defensive coordinator in Andy Avalos that is more aggressive. Their former defensive coordinator is now a high school coach. That's not a joke. That's just a factual statement. Um, Andy Avalos is going to bring more blitzes and uh, pressure the quarterback and disguise coverages, Max uh, mix up his front. So all those things I think will be positive. And this is a coaching staff, even though last year was a debacle, that has a proven concept of winning. Like Sonny Dykes has won at all of his different stops uh, with the exception of Cal. But he's done a good job everywhere he's been. I think he understands how to win, what it takes to be good in this league. And they've got good skill players, a QB that's returning some production. And I feel like they're going to be a force this year. Cameron Stewart of Locked on Baylor. Um, looking at my sheet here. You know, the, the bottom dwellers of the conference are the third segment. I don't know why. After three and I nine was a little last, overzealous, yeah. Three and nine last year. Why are you here? Why are you in the sneaky contenders portion of our show? What is What's going on with that big guy? Look, look, that is that is a great question. That is a great question, but I know that if Simcox is here, then I need to be here too. Um, but why are they going to be sneaky, Drake? On the positive side, Dave Aranda is the defensive coordinator because we know he's much better at that than he's been a head coach. And, and Gary I, Patterson's the head coach. Is, look, right? Look, look, Gary <laughs> Patterson ice in there. Look, Gary Patterson influence in there. And so it's Dave Rand on the defensive side. It's Jake Spavadol on the offensive side. Uh, I was one of the first on the Spavadol train. I am still on that train. It's not going to be fixed overnight, but I love the offense that he's bringing to the table. I mean, who would have thunk it? A spread offense in, in college football. This thing might catch on. Uh, spread with a lot of air raid in there. Looks a lot like the Bryles offense that led Baylor to great success 10 years ago. Uh, so I love bringing that back, and I like having Dave Aranda back in his bag coaching the defense. Other than that, the roster is a huge question mark, but, but – I, I think there is a lot of potential from a good young secondary last year and a, a good young running back in Dawson Pendergrass last year ready to hopefully take the next step. So I do see some positives here for this Baylor team. Baylor is fifth in return production defensively in the nation coming into 2024. Uh, that is a defense that was 116th overall. So uh, Yeah, uh, baby. You know, Bring you it got, back. You got to run it back. All of us, we're doing it all over again. You got a good um, defensive coach at Midway High in Waco, as Simcox uh, <laughs> referenced. Uh, right. So who so, knows if it goes to if it goes wrong? There you go. Fingers crossed for those guys that you put together. Uh, all the same guys that were were okay last season. Um, we'll go back to you, Mountaineer Paul. If there's one big hot take that you've got for 2024 for your squad, what is it? I think West Virginia beats Penn State in Week One. Uh, oh. I really do. I have we can really all get behind that, and we can Let's all get behind it. it. Yeah. For the betterment of the conference as well, like you guys are just pointing to. But I think West Virginia beats Penn State in week one, which is going to be the litmus test that tells us all we need to know about West Virginia. If they do that, everything's on the table. I think if and they will beat Penn State in week one. I do believe that. 
and then the conference is up for grabs. I really think they've got a great shot at that and possibly a CFP bid. Every player on the roster in every press conference this year, the words Big 12 championship have come out of their mouth. Neil Brown's got this thing turned around in year five. Uh, far cry from last season when at Big 12 Media Days, Neil Brown said, look me in the eyes. I promise we won't finish last. And they didn't. He was he was right. right. He nailed it. Uh, and you're still college, riding that. College football playoff contender Andy Staples has some random formula he used with on three that had UCF and West Virginia in the playoff this season. So I, I guess thanks, Andy Staples, from on three. We'll see. Simcox, for you, what's the big hot take for TCU? Uh, Savion Williams, he's going to be a first-round draft pick next year. Drake Toll, I think he's set up to be really good. He really clicked with Josh Hoover at the end of the season, had a huge game against Texas. Big physical wide receiver, can go up and get 50-50 balls. There's going to be a vertical passing game this season because there has to be, so they're going to give him opportunities to make plays down the field. I like what this offense is bringing to the table. They've uh, brought in some you know, guys like Dana Holgerson to help him out, which is kind of intriguing as well. So I think they're going to be better on that side of the ball this year, more efficient. And as bad as the defense was last season, Sonny Dykes is an offensive coach. Kendall Browse needs to do a much better job, or this team's not going to have a lot of success. Kevin Borba, you've got two Heisman Trophy contenders at three positions on Colorado. What's your big hot take for 2024? Yeah, I think that could be one of them that they send two guys to New York. And I think another one is that they start off 5-0. and um, I think Colorado probably has one of the tougher – um, opening slates in all college football. They go on the road three out of the first five games, and they get to play an FCS power in North Dakota State who could really embarrass them on national television on a Thursday night. And so I think they have a chance to make a statement. While a lot of people view it as a chance to be embarrassed, Colorado has a chance to make a huge statement and kind of show, hey, we've learned from our mistakes last year, and we're going to not fizzle out after an electric 3-0 and start, which was a fun month of September. Cam, it does feel like Baylor has some momentum recruiting trail, especially the we pay players shirts. What's the big take out of Waco? The hot take is that they're the best Big 12 team in Texas this year, which I know is not scorching, but okay. it would be it would be quite a success. We, I, I'm sure you had Tech in the first segment, and I bet you got our friend Parker and UH in the final one, and then we've got mm -hmm. Steven here. Uh, so some question marks around this conference, obviously the middle class of this conference, and a lot of that is in the state of Texas. We saw – uh, Tech kind of failed to meet expectations last year. I had them as a dark horse to win the conference, and they didn't yep. get really near that. Um, and I think there's enough question marks here in the other teams in the Big 12 that if Baylor's got a good good enough quarterback situation, which they haven't had the last couple of years, then I think they could be the best of, of those four teams. Mountaineer Paul, let's talk schedule now before we wrap this thing up. Um, everybody lock in, dial in for a second. Think about these teams. Penn State, Kansas, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Kansas State, Arizona, and you still got UCF and Texas Tech on. That's eight teams that are going to be really good this season. West Virginia gets all eight of them. How do you get through it? You know, it's it's going to be tough for sure. Luckily, we have a ton of depth this year, more depth than we've ever had. We're, we're at least too deep in every position, and, and that's every position. That's going to help a lot. Um, you know, don't forget about Albany, who was the FCS final last year. I think we we said that on the show the other day. But it's, you know, the one positive I can look to in that murderer's row of a schedule, the backyard brawl will not be a walk in the park. It never is in that rivalry. Home and away. If you look at how these are all broken up, West Virginia, when starting in Big 12 play, has Kansas at home on yeah. the road, Oklahoma State. Then they come back home to Iowa, with Iowa State home again, Kansas State. So you're getting the best teams at home outside of Oklahoma State and Arizona. Those are the two toss-up games. If my prediction is correct and they can beat a Penn State in week one, those two road games could be the losses against Oklahoma State and Arizona. You're still looking at a 10-2 and two West Virginia, pushing for that title and a playoff berth. Steven Simcox for TCU, that game at Stanford, Long Island, UCF, SMU on the road against Kansas, that SMU game also on the, like, quote, road. Uh, I think it'd be more TCU fans there probably no matter what. How do you get through a first five that offers some early te early tests and then the back end of the schedule that has Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, Arizona? What's what's the best case scenario with a schedule like this? Yeah, I think getting off to a good start is a huge key. That's a great take by me. And um, also nice. just those teams early in the schedule – We'll tell a lot about this TCU team. You get UCF with KJ Jefferson and an offense that's very explosive. A Stanford team that's not predicted to be great, but it's returning a lot of players. And then an SMU team 
Four o'clock in the afternoon on the CW, get your popcorn, watch a rerun of Vampire Diaries, then watch the Iron Skillet, baby. That's a big ball game. SMU, they demand to be taken seriously. They paid themselves into a power conference, much like Lori Loughlin did with her kids, getting them into USC. They're trying to get this done. So this is a big deal for them. This is the biggest game on their schedule. They always circle it. It's a huge thing. Uh, tens of people will be there in Dallas to watch it. Hostile environment. So Frogs need to get a statement victory there. And, yeah, the back half of the schedule is tough. On the road against Utah, um, that will be a, a big-time game, right? Utah fans have already kind of penciled themselves in as, as winning the conference, so that's kind of rich. Um, and then Oklahoma State, Arizona down the stretch as well. you got to win some of those swing games and upset people if you're going to be a factor in the race and have a chance at least at the end of the season to make it to Arlington. At 3 o'clock on the CW, SMU, TCU, 6 o'clock, Superman and Lois. So if you stick That's around right. a little bit, you get a good rerun. They're on. Lead an audience, baby. Lead an audience in the small yeah. For you, Kevin Borba, uh, we've already mentioned North Dakota State, Nebraska on the road, Colorado State on the road. Those aren't easy. Back half of the schedule with games against <clears throat> Texas Tech, Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State all yeah. in a row. How, how do you do it? I think, honestly, one, Colorado needs to come into this season – with a mindset of whatever happens to us isn't the end-all be-all. If we start 5-0, and we're not national champions. If we lose three games in a row, we could still savage this season. I think Colorado had no in-between last year, so when they started 3-0, and they fell on their face. And then when they started losing, they just kept rolling and rolling. And so I think when you get to that stretch, you got to take it week by week, right? And if you split those games and go 2-2, two and two, I think that's a success. And if you happen to go 3-1, and one, also a success there. You just have to be – cognizant that every game has to sort of be taken an approach of it's we got to focus on this team we can't look ahead we have to focus on the task at hand otherwise you're going to be embarrassed again right unfortunately we will not be on the cw um in front of superman and whatever the uh, lowest but lowest yeah, lowest apologies <laughs> but we will have chances in primetime games to make an opportunity or make a, a name for themselves right so use those chances to make a statement in the positive way otherwise you'll be a meme Cameron Stewart, good news. Baylor is recruiting really, really well right now. Bad news, they're all 17 years old. This schedule has Tarleton State, and then after that, pretty much every week is a gauntlet. How do the Bears get through it? What's the best case? Uh, well, best case, I, I've got them as a best case seven, maybe eight win team. And that is that is on the very high end, right? Uh, and I look specifically, Drake, at foliage season, beginning of October, through to most of us call it fall but yes thank you yes through to that well in texas we don't really have that um so yeah. fall i guess to the to thanksgiving at iowa state butt bowl in lubbock hosting oklahoma state on homecoming for some reason uh hosting tcu that's usually a protest game they don't like winning those and then at west virginia they really don't like winning those because they've never done it uh that is an absolute gauntlet when you're looking at a team that's coming off of three and nine last year so how do they do it drake it starts with running the football i know that's so simple but this was the worst offensive line in the conference last year. Thank you for coming in, Colorado. Appreciate that. Uh, but they couldn't run the ball whatsoever last year, even though that's what they were supposed to do. And they are really supposed to do it in this Spavital offense. But if they can't, they become too one-dimensional, and therefore I don't think good enough. But I Baylor was 116 in overall defense in the country, 101st in overall offense in the country, so they fired the offensive coordinator. That wraps up our contenders from the back half segment. Next, we go to the teams that are going to need a little bit of help. Thank you guys for being here. Make sure to subscribe to Locked On Baylor, Locked On West Virginia, Locked On Buffs, Locked On Horn Frogs, wherever you get your podcasts. And which other teams maybe could possibly please do something in 2024? We will tell you who wins the conference as well on the 2024 Locked On College Football Season Preview, Big 12 Edition. Today's show is brought to you by Ibotta Sandals sunscreen snacks for the kids what do these have in common you're probably buying them a ton again this summer but don't stress about the cost use i bought it and get cash back on all of your purchases it's a free app that is right free it lets you earn cash back every time you shop earn on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies even toys the average i bought a user earns 256 dollars per year that could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip that flight you've been eyeing or the fancy dinner that you've been craving you can save on over 2400 brands and shop at over a thousand retailers including your favorite grocery stores lowe's macy's sephora best buy more it's time you joined over 50 million users who use ibotta right now ibotta is offering listeners five dollars that's right five dollars just for trying ibotta by using code locked on college when you register go to the app store google play store 
Download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code Locked On College. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use code Locked On College. Back on the 2024 Locked On College football season preview, Big 12 edition. We're joined by Richie Bradshaw of Locked On Sun Devils, Jake Hatch of Locked On Cougars, Parker Ainsworth of Locked On Cougs, talking Arizona State, BYU, and Houston. This part of the show is brought to you by Puke throw up just absolute <laughs> vomit everywhere uh these teams are what we're calling nicely the dark horse candidates um pretty much everyone in the country is voting these schools at the bottom of the big 12 this season i as someone who loves all of the big 12 hope each of you win and go to the college football playoff however the problem is that's not going to happen uh richie bradshaw we will start with you and arizona state um you guys are gonna have you guys could have fun this season um uh, doing the football stuff a little bit out there right yeah, it's a brutal schedule. You are facing <laughs> arguably the top five best teams in the Big 12, all of whom are ranked. But it's second year of Kenny Dillingham. These are this, this is a very motivated team. It's that do your 111th next man up mentality. They're adding talent through the transfer portal. There's young guys here. They're definitely hoping that they can build upon a three win season last year. That could have been more if they learn how to finish games this year. Yeah, Jake Hatch of Locked On Cougars with BYU. I mean, there's a team that last year, sitting midway through the year, was like, hey, great, we're going to a bowl game. We got five wins. We've locked it in. And then the skid down the stretch was demoralizing. How do you pick it up going into this next football season? Well, quite frankly, they've addressed it head on. The five and seven mark has been thrown in these players' faces all offseason long. The strength staff, the coaches, they've all said, hey, you guys want to do that again? You want to be on a five-game losing streak to end another season? Do what you're doing right now. So it's been a whole idea of heightening what BYU did last year to get themselves to that five and two record, as you mentioned, Drake. But they want to go past that. They want to win six, seven, eight games. But they are understanding there's a, there's a lot of work to be done with BYU. Parker Ainsworth, basketball season's coming up there, big guy. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, here you guys are going to have a hell of a starting five this 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 season. Yeah. I, I Are we talking football? I thought this was a basketball. No. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I do. Before you jump in, though, Willie Fritz, love him. Guy's been to a couple national championships at the FCS level, won the Cotton Bowl at Tulane. This is a great pickup. Problem is, it's it's year number one, and that takes a whole lot. Of, and Chris Pesman's got like the eight. A couple of you guys don't have ADs. Um, that's or, or new ADs at the very least, that's a lot that Houston's facing. Yeah, it, I think everyone feels great about the Willie Fritz hire, like you alluded to. He's been successful yeah. at every level of college football. It is year one. There was an exodus of players in the transfer portal as we got into the coaching change. And we play four of the ranked Big 12 opponents. Oh, and then our non-conference includes a trip to Norman. Like It's going to be a rough year from a scheduling perspective, but I don't think there's like people hanging their hat, like head down, like worried about... The future of Houston football is just the immediate future is going to be we're going to call it qualitative victories for you, Richie, going back to Arizona State. I mean, this is a program along with Arizona that it feels like a lot of people, at least in the last two decades, have overlooked. There has not been consistent hype for the program. And then when you hire that big name head coach, it all completely goes down the drain in Tom Herman. This year under Dillingham, I mean, what what do you what's the hot take? What's the hey? If we do this, there's a way to make a wave in college football. The thing that they need to learn to do is finish games. Last year they went three and nine. They were in four other games. They very easily could have been a six win team. They were right there with Washington, who went to the national championship game. They very very easily could have pulled off that upset. This year, they need to learn how to finish those games. They need to learn how to win football games that are tight. These one-possession games, these 10-point losses, you need to turn those into wins. And again, this is a very challenging schedule for the Sun Devils, but you can also look at it in a positive way and go, you know what? There's a lot of statement games here. There's a lot of opportunities for us to win these games and go, holy cow, what's going on in Tempe, Arizona? Kenny Dillingham's got these guys coached up right now. Jake Hatch for BYU. Look, I go back to what Arizona was in the Pac-12 last year. I go back to TCU going to the national championship after a debacle under Gary Patterson going into Sonny Dykes. And then Baylor in 2021 coming off 2-7, and seven, winning the Sugar Bowl. Last season, West Virginia picked 1-11 and 11 by yours truly, goes to a bowl game, and gets nine wins. How does BYU become that team, that shocking team in the Big 12? Get steady quarterback play. Obviously, there's a battle right now between Jake Retzloff and Gary Bohannon. You referenced the 2021 Baylor team. 
He's the only quarterback in this league right now who has a Big 12 title on his resume, and he happens to be quarterback in BYU now. So whoever wins that job, they've got to provide steady quarterback play. If they can get the ball into BYU's uh, playmaker's hands at wide receiver, at tight end, and also in the run- with the running backs, that could go a long way to helping BYU out. I'm expecting a better defense for the Cougars in the second year with Jay Hill as their defensive coordinator, but it really comes down to can they get the quarterback play that will elevate this program and get them to that six or seven win mark. Parker, last season, Houston did beat West Virginia and Baylor. So you got a couple of Big 12 wins. Historic, I mean, teams that have been there for a decade plus under your belt. And now coming up, UTSA is a good program as well that Houston knocked off. Now a new head coach, though. Is this a complete rebuild or are there still pieces there to be competitive? Definitely pieces there, including a returning starting quarterback, uh, which is always nice to have a couple of towns to white out. Like I think the truth is there are going to be games where Houston is more competitive than people realize because of who Willie Fritz is. And there are a couple of the programs that frankly could drop those kind of games. They don't realize going to the third quarter that Houston is bringing what they're bringing. Uh, and, and I think Houston can upset a couple of people like that. I'm not predicting college football playoff national championship in year one, although I'm going to convince myself every week we're going to win that Saturday. I, but I do think that they're going to win more games than people are alluding to. This team is not as talented as they were a couple of years back when they got to the American Athletic Conference championship game and you know pushed Cincinnati for the round for the first half. That was Cincinnati team that went to the college football playoff then, right? But this is a team that has a very clear culture and identity under Fritz. I think it's going to carry them a long way. Uh, well, guys, we have 10 more minutes to fill. So everybody have a, anything good happening for in the week for you guys, or, um, I guess let's make an entertaining 10 minutes. Richie, what's your biggest hot take in the big 12 outside of Arizona state? Outside of Arizona state, biggest hot take. Uh, if Jalen Daniels stays healthy at Kansas, they are the biggest threat to Utah to win the big 12. It just, it hinges on his health. Devin Neal running back as well. Kansas has a great shot under Lance Leipold. Jeff Grimes comes in. A couple of us. Hey, Jake. No Jeff Grimes. Uh, yes, we that do. Is good. That's going to be a Kansas team that's dangerous. Leipold has got – he's instilled his culture there. I have them in Arlington in my book as well, Richie. Good. Good, Richie. Hot start. Jake Hatch, your hot Big 12 take this season. All right, here's the thing. Our, our The arch rival for BYU-Utah is the hot team, obviously. There's a lot of talk about them nationally. Keep an eye on Kansas State. There is something I, there, I just got. There's something going on in Manhattan to me. I, I know that Richie said he thinks Kansas can make a run at. I think with what Kansas State has got going right now, keep an eye on them. I know they were uh, picked second in the league, but I just keep looking at that team and wondering, okay, what are they missing? They're not missing much. So Avery Johnson and company, keep an eye on the Cats because I really do think that they are kind of being overlooked in all this talk about the Big 12 title race. Parker, as you scan the conference, what stands out to you as the hot take in 2024? I'm also sticking to the Sunflower State. I think there's a lot of talk about Utah as the headliner in this conference. And I got to be honest, I think Kansas State is the team to beat. I, I know that Utah did very well in the Pac-12 the last handful of years. This is a whole different kind of travel schedule than they are used to. Uh, Kansas State also has a handful of, not just because there are a few of the teams on the screen right now, a handful of games at the end of the season they can kind of get right and get healthy as other schools are kind of falling down the charts, I think Kansas State's going to be really good this year. Before we go into, I, I'm cruel, I know, going to make you all pick your Big 12 champion and give me who's going to Arlington at the end of the year. I go back to Corey Kiner at Cincinnati. His team wasn't very good last year. However, most people knew the name Corey Kiner. He stood out in the conference. Who's the one guy, Richie, for Arizona State, that even if the Sun Devils aren't great, this is the name that everyone's going to know? Oh, man, there there's a lot of sleepers on this team. The first name that comes to mind is going to be a uh, nickel corner Cole Martin, former four star kid out of uh, Arizona. So local kid plays at Oregon last year, stand out on an Oregon defense, transfers to Arizona State. He will be taking over Jordan Clark's role as the nickel, potentially someone who flexes around the safety and all over the place for this defense, but a very high level player and somebody that I anticipate is going to not only make a big impact for this team, but if you want another bold take, I think by the end of the year, you're going to be talking about him as a potential all-conference player. Jake, you might have an All-American and Ben Bywater in your back pocket. Is that the guy that everybody's going to know? Well, I I hate to break it to you. Ben Bywater is officially medically retired. Uh, There you go. All right. Well, okay. Parker Ainsworth, (laughs) Lucked on Cougs. I've got one for you, though. 
Keep an eye on his replacement. Yale Acera is the name to know. He's a six foot three, two hundred fifty pound linebacker who's from uh, Pimview High School in Utah. He's going to come in and fill that spot for Ben Bywater. And if he can stay healthy this year, he's a redshirt freshman, but he has got all of the skill, all of the size to be an impact player as BYU's middle linebacker this season. Gosh. All right, Parker, who is still alive on the Houston Cougars and playing <laughs> football that could possibly make headlines? I mean, it would have been really funny if you'd gone with any of the number of guys that transferred out in the coaching change. Um, <laughs> that would have been pretty good. No, I uh, will say... Uh, I'm torn between a, a rising sophomore running back named Parker Jenkins, not just because his first name is also Parker, but because he's a very talented running back. Looks like he's going to get a lot more carries this year. The Kevin Barbe offense coming from Mississippi State, Appalachian State before that. A lot more ground and pound out of Houston. Defensively, I love a kid named A.J. Hall, who's a big-time safety. Really, really loves contact. And you got to love that out of safety. I uh, was a big-time player at New Mexico State. Uh, in New Mexico a couple years ago, in New Mexico, in New Mexico a couple years ago, um, looking to have a bigger role in the defense this year, and, and I think he'll he'll have some again highlight kind of hits throughout the season. Um, you know, it's not the tank Dells and, and stuff like that, the, the sexy positions we're used to necessarily, but ground and pound running back can be a lot of fun. Richie, your two teams in Arlington, and who wins the conference? I think right now I would go Utah and probably Kansas. I, I think Oklahoma State has a chance to make a run if they can find uh, offense that's not Ollie Gordon, which it's a very good team. They've got uh, the Presley kid. I can't remember his name at receiver. But point point uh, Kansas versus Utah, I'm going to take Utah. If, if Utah has a healthy Cam Rising, that team is going to go all the way to the playoff, and they're going to be a really – Really tough team this year, especially defensively. Yep, salt in the wound for Jake Hatch. Jake, um, Arlington this year, do you also have Utah there? I do have the Utes making it. Uh, obviously, they are just a very talented team, as Richie talked about. Cam Rising, he's the ultimate gamer. I, I can say that just having watched him as long as I have from afar. I have the Utes. I have the Kansas State Wildcats, the top two teams in the preseason poll. I do see them being there in Arlington, but I will say this. I think Kansas State wins it. I think I think K State will be the Big Twelve champions this year. I, I just like I said earlier, there is something about uh, K State that just they continue to kind of be uh, slept on. I know they're in the little apples they like to call it out there in Manhattan, Kansas, but keep an eye on them. I think they're really really good. Parker, who plays at AT and T Stadium? I got Kansas State and Oklahoma State. Um, I think a lot of people are high on Utah for a lot. Like I said earlier, a lot of great reasons, great time in the Pac twelve. I think that the weirdness of this conference, a lot of teams that look a lot alike or a lot of teams that feel a lot alike from a national perspective is going to kind of yield some weird results as well. I'm going Kansas State and Oklahoma State in the uh, in the game itself and then Kansas State with the win. Uh, I think you could see both of them representing in a, in a 12-team playoff, uh, depending on how the rest of the country goes. Um, because there's going to be moments, I think, where Kansas State's going to be like, how good is this team yeah. throughout the season? I'm just really impressed by the roster that got put together up there. Very much on board with Utah being in Arlington. I also have Kansas there alongside. I think Lance Leipold has established in Lawrence something different. That win against Oklahoma last year was a very good piece of that. And if the defense comes together, they're going to be dangerous. I'm right there with you, Richie. i got Kansas beating Utah at Arlington. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. And to all the hosts that joined us, that does it for the 2024 Locked On College Football Season Preview Big 12 edition, specifically to you guys, Richie Bradshaw of Locked On Sun Devils. Subscribe there. Subscribe to Locked On Cougars. Subscribe to Locked On Cougs wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Follow and subscribe to your favorite Locked On Big 12 family of schools podcast. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. And don't forget, I'll have you covered of the entire conference on Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team every day.